Hi, Dr. Perez here. If you've ever had an MRI taken of your lumbar spine or your neck or anywhere in your spine and read the report uh, that was written by the physician who read your films, you've probably heard terms like broad-based disc bulge, osteophytes, spondylosis, L4, L5, encroachment on the fecal sac. What I'd like to do is show you a model of a motor unit that includes a disc and two adjoining vertebrae and show you exactly what these structures are and the significance. What I have here is a model that illustrates the gradual progression of DJD or degenerative joint disease, sometimes called DDD, which is degenerative disc disease. This one is what's considered a textbook normal vertebral segment. This one is classified as phase one degeneration. This one is phase two spinal degeneration and this one is phase three spinal degeneration. When you look at the spinal segment from this view you see the disc and the disc is comprised of two parts. The annulus fibrosis. This is fibrocartilage that connects adjacent vertebrae. It's very strong material and it's designed to distribute pressure and offer stability. The second part of the disc is the nucleus pulposus. It's like a gelatinous type material and what it does is it binds water and maintains hydrostatic pressure. The nucleus is held tightly within the center of this disc by these concentric layers of the annulus fibrosis. Now these are the vertebral bodies and when viewed from the side they should have smooth surfaces like so. Now as a side note this is not anatomically correct because in the lumbar spine you don't have the solid spinal cord you have what's called the cauda equina. At the T12 to L1 level the spinal cord which is an extension of your brain by the way divides into long strands uh, called the scotta equina. Equina means horse. So whoever gave it that term must have observed that it looked like a horse tail. And these nerves travel down and they eventually split at the bottom and they go to your legs. They form the sciatic nerve in each leg. This here where the cauda equina is located, the space is called the central canal. You may have heard central canal stenosis. This occurs when either disc material or bone material or thickened ligaments occlude or partially obstruct the central canal, causing canal stenosis. Stenosis is when a, an opening in the body narrows. Now when I turn it to the side, this nerve root is in a space as well called the intervertebral foramen. And you have one on each side. And this is the area where discs tend to herniate, which enables them to press on these nerve roots and cause radicular patterns such as numbness, tingling, and pain down your leg. These again are the spinous processes and whenever you have a bony model and you see bumps like this, like the spinous processes, and these are the transverse processes, uh, those are muscle attachment sites. So with the spinous processes, the interspinous ligaments connect here, <clears throat> and small ligaments that are involved in rotation. These are the facet joints in the back. So they limit uh, rotation to guard against injury to the disc. Phase one level of spinal degeneration, you'll start to see decreased height in the disc when viewed from the side and from the front. Okay, when you put it this way, there may be evidence of degeneration in the annulus. If you look closely here, there's separation between adjacent uh, lamellae of the annulus fibrosis here and here, and that 
sets the stage for disc herniation because the walls get weaker if adjacent uh, layers separate. Those are called circumferential tears. In phase two level of spinal degeneration, uh, you'll see the appearance of osteophytes. Osteophytes are bony projections usually around the end plates of the vertebrae and they're usually associated with instability and weakness and wear and tear. You'll see more advanced degeneration of the spinal disc here. And if you look closely here, you could see a disc uh, protrusion right here. This is classic. This is a posterior lateral left disc protrusion about four to five millimeters. And you could see how it impacts the spinal root which branches with other spinal roots to form the sciatic nerve which goes down the back of your leg all the way down to your foot. In phase two there's also possibility of canal stenosis here where the central canal narrows and starts to encroach around the cauda equina and that in itself can cause uh, radicular symptoms, paresthesias, numbness, loss of strength. We'll start to see osteoarthritis osteophytic activity, ligament thickening in the facet joints, in these areas here. And the facet joints, if you look really close, form part of the periphery of the IVF or intervertebral foramen where that nerve root exits. So if there's any thickening of, a, of the facet joints, it usually results in lateral canal or IVF stenosis. And this is phase three. With phase three, we see advanced spondylosis or osteophytic activity, severe loss of disc height in the discs, disc desiccation on MRI, a desiccated disc or a disc that has lost uh, all or most of its fluid content is going to look a solid black. As the disease progresses, the vertebrae eventually fuse. These osteophytes uh, make contact, the ones above and below. It's kind of like a metal weld where the two bones come together and fuse into one, and the disc just dissolves. Now this may sound like a good thing, but usually that's associated with stenosis, and cases typically don't get that advanced. The patient usually gets spinal decompression surgery which involves uh, putting in an artificial disc, scraping out the old one, just shaving off the bone that's occluding the canals.